just when you thought things couldn't possibly get any more difficult, I'm here to bring you some news. Let's look at what's happening with Argentina. Why? Argentina is one country that has seen repeated cycles of massive inflation, currency destruction, and eventually debt default. Well, in this, it's a lesson. Why? Because I warned about Argentina years ago. I told you, look at what's happening. It's not that bad today, but based on my estimations, things are going to get really bad. And that's where we're at. But you look at what's going on in Europe, it looks like there's some serious turmoil ahead. So I'm going to show you that as well, because Europe, my goodness, it is not in a good position here and now. Let me show you this first. Argentina Central Bank lifts rate to 81% as inflation jumps. What's the inflation rate? Imagine this, higher than expected to 104%. You can't stop that. It's over. It's done. The currency is finished, okay? And I talked about this years ago. I thought it was pretty obvious. People didn't want to hear it. And some people were saying that's it's not true. Well, look, Argentina's economy will teeter on the edge of a deeper crisis in the run-up to October's presidential vote as growing market anxiety adds to a harmful mix of drought-induced re recession and skyrocketing inflation. There's a lot going on inside of Argentina. It's not just one factor, but they see this periodically. It's like, okay, time to default again. But now this is one country that at some point had a very strong currency. It's not as if it was always weak, okay? But what happens? Over the period of time, maybe it's bad decisions, maybe it's going on you know, politically, maybe it's central bankers, all these different things. And here we have it today. People are feeling the effects of this directly. When your currency can't buy stuff, well, then you got a problem. Okay, if you got US dollars, you're doing okay. If you're earning, you know, the peso, you're not okay. So what do you think? What do you think is going to happen in this period? Let me show you. UK inflation is not, uh, is just not going down as the cost of living crisis offers no respite. It's not. It's over 10% on their official metrics. But you look at it here on something that I think is important. That's food and non-alcoholic beverage prices increasing by 19%. It's, it's incredible. This is something that's so basic, right? So, it's such big food, shelter, energy. You need these three things. If the, you know, the latest iPhone or laptops or whatever goes up in price, you, you don't need that. You really don't. You can always choose a cheaper one and so on. But food, energy, shelter, you, you got to do with that. And so what, what do people do in these cases here? They turn off the heater when they really need it. They wear double blankets, three blankets, all these different things. Um, you know, they be mindful of things. They, they seal their doors, like whatever they can do in the wintertime. In the summertime, they use fans instead of using the air conditioning. Like all, but, but how much can you squeeze? You can only squeeze so far. And that's why people are encountering the highest debt levels they've ever seen before. They're using this buy now, pay later garbage that's out there that, in my opinion, shouldn't really exist other than for absolute emergencies, life or death emergencies. And here we have it. That's what's going on. So um, for food prices, this is one factor, but services doesn't get mentioned either. I Every service that I use, the price just continues to go up, 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 up. And that is something that the companies, the businesses, they're going to do it. As long as people are still coming in the door. Now, if they reach a ceiling and then suddenly, oh, we're not getting that client, that customer's coming back, that, okay, maybe we can bring it down or maybe that's kind of the ceiling and we'll try to attract some new customers. And that's the way they do it. That's where we're, where we're going today. Inflation is hitting hard. Britain has too many sick workers and it's holding back the economy. The labor market data from the ONS showed a record of 2.5 million people that were economically inactive due to ill health. So here we go. This is something that you don't think about. But the reason I mention this here, obviously that that's it's an issue on its own, but when people they expect they they have their own agenda and everything 
where they expect, okay, when I'm 65, I'm going to retire and I'm going to have this much money and it's going to bring me this much income and everything's going to be fine and dandy, generally doesn't work out. So that could be really easily disrupted. So what I would say is that we should probably prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. We should have preparations in place and not necessarily think that one day you're going to be okay in health. Maybe you, uh, your spouse, maybe your wife, you know, God forbid, gets sick. Maybe it's someone in a more extended family that needs your help, needs your, your services. You can't work. And so you need to be there for them. And that means your income won't be there. So what can you do? Give me a few minutes. I'm going to talk about that. Would you like to know? Well, you have to be aware of this. Cost of living crisis, why we are ignoring the squeeze and still splashing out on travel. A lot of people, they're saying, hey, they're still spending. UK, US, no matter where you go. You're going to see that all around the world. People are not really going to worry if it's something that they can't, you know, really afford because they'll just do buy now and they'll pay later. Okay, that's not really being hit hard. But you see this, um, van, hashtag van life. I'm sure you've seen that. Cost of living, large rent rises are causing 66 year old to live in a van. This is just one person. Okay, but I, I've seen a lot of this actually and people are being squeezed out of it. Uh, you know, the, a lot of that came out in 2020 where they're saying, you know, I'm I'm kind of priced out of the market. Maybe this is a good opportunity. I don't have a job. I'm just going to squeeze down to a van and I'm going to travel around. Some people did that. It's an experience. Hopefully they get back up on their feet and, and they can go again. And, you know, it could be worse than living in a van. It could be much worse than that. Uh, but let's just think about something for a second here. They printed, hang with me. Did they or did they not print trillions of dollars just over the last few years globally? Like, like trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars. They did, right? Yeah? Okay. Why are people suffering more now today than they were a couple years ago? Think about this for us for a moment. They printed trillions upon trillions of dollars. But you, the individual out there, your circumstances are likely not better than they were before in terms of when you factor in inflation and everything. Okay, the average person, maybe not you, I'm just saying in general. Would you agree with that? Most people, because of inflation, they're paying more, they're getting less. Inflation, shrinkflation, all these different things. So what's going on here? Well, of course, that's what happens when you print the currency. It devalues it and stuff costs more, you get less. And most people would say, no, not really. Is it? That's what happens. That's the way it works. It's absolutely a fact. And what is your government worried about? What is the Bank of England worried about? Ah, yes. Cryptocurrencies are a fundamental issue for the Bank of England. Uh, you know, new currencies and ways for paying things are exciting, but also a fundamental issue. They're, they're concerned about the wrong things. You know, nothing's nefarious goes on with this in comparison to cash. It's ridiculous. It's silly. But all of this will just lead closer and closer to a central bank digital currency. That's the point. So what's happening with real estate though? Let me show you a few numbers. By the way, real estate, despite everything, still so hot. The bubble is just unbelievable. This is one stat. I found this. Increasingly, millennial renters are giving up on home ownership, annual share who plan to always rent instead of buy. 2022, that is nearly 25%. Huge. What is it? Well, let's be honest. Prices are incredibly high in most cities. And then as 2020 happened, people were moving out of the cities into the smaller towns, driving those prices up considerably. And there's not enough building going on in these smaller places. Okay. So, it's that, but actually the younger uh, groups, I would say, are less interested in home ownership too. They're saying, why? Like, why would I do that? And certainly you could, you know, with a house and things, there's always problems. There's always more reliance on putting more money into it. This breaks, that breaks, appliance goes, this and that. Uh, renting has some advantages, okay? So it has a lot, a lot of disadvantages too. 
So I, I could see, I can like, understand that. What's happening today? We're renting everything. You don't own CDs anymore. Think about it. If you're old enough, like myself, owning CDs. Now that's ridiculous. Now you just pull out your phone, you pull out your, your you know, connected to the internet, you just stream any song you want. Uh, ownership has changed. People don't desire, why would I want CDs when I could just stream every song? I can have 70 million songs available to me in an instant for one fee. So that, that has really changed. And I think that's going to be a big issue. So what I would suggest for anybody, look into multifamily real estate. If you want to know where this is going to be the future, I really believe multifamily real estate is the number one income producing, cash flow producing real estate. Cities keep building luxury apartments that almost no one can afford. Uh, you know, we'll see about that. But uh, ultimately, I think that we got a lot of empty, un undeclared empty real estate because a lot of these things, yes, they are priced very high. Somebody's buying them. The transactions are going through. And I believe they sit empty, but they don't want to admit that. The Western housing market recession hit so hard and fast that a Fortune 500 firm that was riding high at $34 per share has crashed to $1. I'm just highlighting this. They're showing open door. Part of there's more to that, but just showing you that things, you know, when even one segment of a particular sector, let's say real estate, gets hit, it could crush a company. Prices are still elevated. Okay, home prices are still heavily, but because of one issue, it can crush a company. So don't put all your eggs in one basket, diversify. That's all. Simple, simple thing, yes. But, you know, I, I just want to highlight the fact that for some people, they just don't get it. And they're just like, no, nah, this is the next big thing. I'm going to put all my money in that. And they realize how difficult of a choice that could be. Okay, so what can you do? Well, I think for a lot of people, what they need to do is have currencies like in income coming through different currencies. Okay. At the same time, you got to develop for yourself. I, I really believe this. I'm going to keep talking about this. I'm going to make an official video about this, but you've got to take the knowledge that you have, condense that down and build a course around this. And I know there's a lot of garbage courses out there. But you got to take what you know and you've got to actively utilize that, put that and package that up so that you have a product to sell. If that's a book, that's fantastic. If it's more appropriate for a book, do a book. If it's more appropriate in audio format, an audio book, do an audio book. But of course, right now today, it's becoming so popular to create courses. So what I'm trying to do right now is to help people to build these courses and you can condense the knowledge, you're a mechanic, you're, you're an artist, whatever the case is, you take that, you condense that down into a course and you sell and you can utilize this very simply, take the knowledge, bring it. Most people don't know what to do. How do I build a sales funnel? How do I do all that? That's what I'm here to do for you. If you're interested, let me know, david at the money gps.com. And I could help you with that because I think that this is the way that people are going to be able to elevate themselves, earn currencies from all around the world, you can bring in different currencies and be able to diversify off of the knowledge you have in your head. That's interesting. Please let me know. David at the money, gps.com. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.